So once again, here we are. Writer Paddy Gormley and director Morris Thorogood of 2020 Visions. And what an exciting week it's been. Years of preparation and finally we've been able to see our ideas come to life on the stage of the RSO Studio Theatre in Barn. Our fabulous team of actors did us proud, didn't they? Olivia Busby played Belinda, Natasha and Lucy. Yes, and James Price was Alec 20, Alec 40 and Alec 60. Alec 80 was Mansell David. And Roz. Alec 80's carer was played by George. Georgia Riley. They all did a fabulous job. And let's not forget our production team. Catherine Evans did the sound and lighting, and Hayley Nunes was our production assistant. And the audience response has been fantastic. So we're going to review the feedback in next week's blog, but today we'd like to share some choice moments from the show. Tell us about one of your favourites, please, Morris. I've chosen a bit where one of Alec 80's visions comes crashing into the real world. Lucy, probably the most terrifying of <laughs> Alex's lovers in the year 2000, is on the phone to our mother, Natasha, whom she hates. When Roz, the carer, steps in, the visions are real for Alec 80, but Roz can't see them. Alec is caught between the dream world and the present world, and Roz is troubled by his behaviour. we're going off on holiday to Venice. Did you? Really? When? One of your men friends? Well, be like that, see if I care. Anyway, he's brilliant on the art and architecture. Bet he even knows some Mark shirt collar size. You indeed. It can't be this one. He'd be in his 80s. <laughs> Wait. I'll ask him, I'm not sure. We've not had time for small talk. Mother's asking for your name. He says it's Melos. He's too gorgeous to be one of yours. If you're so interested, I'm sure I can get him to go to you and I decide to throw him out. What are these stupid questions then? You're just obsessed. Obsessed with men. It's because you're so frustrated that you've always hated my success. Hello! I hope you're taking your medicine. Suggesting as it may be, it's the truth. Your medicine? Have you taken it? I'll say what I like, but at least I'm honest. I've been like that for... what you know. She's gone. <laughs> Listen. <sighs> Did you take your medicine? Um, Yes, I took it. It's not there, is it? All right, so you took it. The question is where you took it to, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Roz. I disposed of it. I hate it. It's, it's giving me bad dreams. Well, I'm sorry too, but the doctor has prescribed it, so you've got to take it. One of my favourite bits follows on directly after that. It's when Roz tricks Alec 80 into taking his medicine. I like this because it demonstrates Alec 80's mischievousness and the warmth of his relationship with his carer, Roz. What sort of bad dreams? Memories. Things I'd rather forget. I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do. You'll only get me into trouble. You're breaking your contract unless you act on the doctor's advice. They'll call off your care plan. You won't report me then. Well, I'll have to unless you promise me. What will they do to me? Oh, they'll probably send Dr. Jean. Oh, I've got no problem with that. I'd rather fancy her. <laughs> you wouldn't fancy her if you knew what she was really like. She's got a filthy temper and she treats us like slaves too. Oh, she loves to read the riot act, professional indemnity, wilt neglect of patient care, minimum wage, idiots, all that stuff. Oh, please, for my sake. But the dreams. I tell you what, I've got some fantastic news, but I can't tell you unless... Oh, the cataracts. Medicine first. Mm. Dr. Jean spoke to the specialist. They've scheduled your op for Tuesday week. Oh, oh, Rose, thank you. I'm so excited. Oh, a, a little kiss to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> you won't report me, will you? Your secret is safe with me. 
We all have secrets, Alec. For me, the difference in the drama and the comedy was highlighted between the scene that you've just chosen, a carer trying to get medicine down, down the old boy's throat, and then the moment when Natasha in his dream, discovers the truth about Alex's affair with her mother, Belinda. You're mm. perfidious. What? I am not perfidious. You took her out to Venice. And she took me. And no doubt the two of you spent all week screwing on No, her. no, making love. Don't say such things. For goodness sake. Monster. Oh. My own mother. My own dear mother. My one true love. Torcello. It was she that took me. And she gave me the book. And you gave her... Nonsense. And with the kiss of Judas, you betrayed me. N N <laughs> Natasha, uh, please. I just played into your... The play lunges from comedy into tragedy at such a speed on the turn of a sixpence. Again, one of my favourite moments follows directly. It's the Alec 80 monologue in which he begins to confront the darkest secrets of his life. I see the second act as gradually peeling away the layers until we get to the depths of his secrets. It was terrifying. I thought she was going to ask me about the inquest. The clamps here. I remember. That was the cause of Belinda's death, the coroner said. I'd never heard of it, but the, the press report said that the mortality rate amongst pregnant women aged 40 or more was particularly high. I'll never forget her picture in the paper. The wounded daughter of the disgraced mother, and wearing the necklace too. She, she looked so ashamed. Lovely. She was only 20, same as me. I was a Judas, she was right. They didn't have the guts to face the inquest. All my fine words were lies. One forever, nothing to be frightened of. Show the world the power of love. What did I do? Hold up in my digs, half expecting the policeman's knock in the middle of the night, taking me away to face the truth? I'll bear you out. No obstacles who get Well, why didn't Natasha mention the inquest? It, it must have been painfully branded on her mind. Why didn't she? I've never been able to explain that. She was the victim, not, not I. My Alex. But worse, Belinda, I betrayed you utterly. The audience once they discovered that the revelation was, was wonderful particularly as we told the story in some places backwards that they had to piece it together and then there it was <gasps> that's the truth mm. very revealing dramatically very 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 successful well uh, the acting in our production has been so fantastic mm. I've, I've very often <laughs> had wet eyes and I, I even now I can't think of it much without getting emotional about the ending of the play it was emotional dramatic and emotional and a, a wonderful experience for anybody who loves theatre well, on a rather more playful note, we, mm. we both came up with the same third choice. <laughs> That's right. The moment I, be 
I love very much because it was so playful. It's from Alec Twenty scene in Venice with Belinda, twice his age. One of the happiest moments in Alec's whole life. They had to pretend to be a mother and son in order to yes. escape the yes. rigours of the time. And there they were, chasing each other around the room like a pair of school children. <laughs> Happy with not a care in the world. Are there some of those sticky bum whatnots? Well, I'm not sure. What's it worth? A kiss? A kiss? They're telling a penny where I come from. <laughs> they matter. I am pleased to offer you enough to buy not just that sticky bun behind your back, but all your sticky buns and your bun factory as well. I'll buy the factory later. You're funny. I've never been so happy. You're the greatest thing in my whole life. She was the greatest. This is like the honeymoon I never had. Would you have come here? It wouldn't ever have been possible. And then, shortly after that moment, we have the exchange of gifts between Alec Twenty and Belinda, which is actually, in some ways, it's the heart of the play. It's the positive part of the secret, and it's a moment of innocent joy oh, that is, of course, going to come back and turn on him in later life, but it's innocent joy. You wandered off all nonchalantly <laughs> yesterday when we were in Murano. I did, didn't I? Pound away for 15 minutes, I did. You'd jilted him. Me? I'm blameless. Look, I can't even seem to get the butter melted on this warm toast, let alone my mouth. I smell the odour of a guilty secret. Well, you have. Shut your eyes, and I'll tell you. This was a huge moment for me. She had insisted on paying for everything, wouldn't take no for an answer. So I saved up all the money I had and bought her the very best necklace I could find. Hands up! Don't shoot! Glass. You shouldn't have. I couldn't let you pay for the whole holiday and, and give you nothing. You've given me a whole new lease of life. That's got to be a more than decent present. Shut your eyes. Oh, I sort of knew there would be a present. We would have this game where we would be apart for 15 minutes and then pretend to see how long we could bear to be away from each other. Oh, wonderful surprise. I, I stood there drooling over it in that old bookshop. I was looking at you drooling, spying with my beady eye. <laughs> Look, it's got the Vaporetto roots and everything. Well, those were our favourite moments from the play. And next week we'll hear what the audience made of it all. <laughs>